Hey everybody, this is Cal and I'm here with my friend Josh. Josh, Josh, thank you so much for taking the time. We're here at Tech Week in Bucharest and uh, really excited to have him on and have a short interview. He's going to speak today in about a couple of hours, I think. Uh, he, I'm, I will let him introduce himself in a second, uh, but really excited to have him on this little interview and to talk about design and design teams and what he's doing and everything else. So design, uh, Josh, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Let us know and the people uh, watching and listening everything else. What do you do? Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Uh, I consider myself a designer. I've been doing it for long enough that it's always just been design, whether it's right. for myself, for my clients, in-house, out-of-house, consulting, teaching. Um, I've, as I've done uh, the work over many decades, um, I've moved further and further away from the aesthetic layer, and I'm thinking a lot more about the people layer of the work. So not just the typeface and color and interaction, but um, the design of teams and the design of the layer of organization that I'm calling the people layer, um, which is not surprising to me. Looking back at my career, I've always been working at that layer. Um, but more, the more I do the work, the more I realize the importance of that layer over technology. The technology, the tools, the, the flat versus skeuomorphic, all those things will always change. But knowing how to work with and collaborate with people across teams and within your organization, that's always going to be an, an important uh, piece of knowledge to develop. Right, so you're also going to speak about, speak about that in your talk, because I, I noticed that in, in your notes. Yes. What is, what is this people layer, and how do you, I, I know you've been, you've been managing teams and you've been doing this for the last 23 years, if I'm correct? Correct, yes. So what have you learned in terms of managing teams, design teams specifically, in this 23 years, like a couple of things that you think are really important? Sure, um, great question. Uh, well, to begin, I think the, the most important thing is that Knowing different perspectives and different ways of approaching and solving a problem, um, that sort of diversity of cognition is always important. It's always going to be valuable. Um, we heard this morning uh, from a director of innovation at NASA, uh, and they're thinking about you know things that are 5, 10, 25 years in the future, um, and how humans are going to be able to interact with robots, um, which is far-fetched to me, although it's coming. Um, but uh, the, the kind of work that you need to do to get anything done in an organization, whether it's a design team or working in partnership with engineering, product management, even HR, um, knowing how different people uh, approach and solve problems is going to always be an important skill. Um, for instance, engineers might uh, not be the most um, open to uh, like a uh, an, an open style collaboration where you're talking and sharing ideas, um, not to dis engineering, but um, they might have a more linear approach to solving problems than a designer which might have a more um, open minded, uh, free thinking way of solving problems. So, even such as uh, even something such as simple as how engineers versus designers think, um, that's always going to be a measure of empathy. Um, so that's that's important. Um, at Twitter, we have a lot of cultural things. Uh, I'm the first uh, design producer right now inside Twitter, uh, which means I think within and across teams. Um, something as simple as a cultural event, how everyone finds inspiration, mm -hmm. that's going to be something that keeps the team together, um, even if it is just the designers and researchers working together. Um, mentor programs, like how you um, develop a new skill or learn something that someone uh, you admire has learned, um, to be able to be paired with another person that helps you grow and learn. Uh, those are the kinds of cultural things that I think are always going to be uh, an element of getting things done. Right. So, talking about design for a second, um, here's my limited experience. I've worked with designers from my team and also for, for other teams, and a lot of them are really extraordinary, gifted, mm -hmm. and they're really talented at what they do, but they tend to not make the difference between what design is and it's beautiful and it's art and, and mm -hmm. it's form and it's actually nice mm -hmm. and serving a purpose. Sure. How do you, I mean that's kind of a personal question I have, how do you m make designers see that this is beautiful but doesn't serve any purpose but this may not be completely gorgeous but it actually serves the purpose that we're looking for. How do you align those things with your, within your design teams to make sure you actually deliver something that works. I think what you're talking about is designing for a user. Yes. The difference between art and design to me is knowing that 
um, you're creating for yourself, that's art, or creating for someone else, that's designed for a purpose. Right. Um, so maybe the designers that you're working with that think more about their work as a piece of art need to spend more time with user research, need to spend more time with the customers that are actually using the product and getting the feedback directly from the customers or right. users so that they hear and learn and listen that maybe the beautiful typeface that they chose, for example, isn't uh, scalable to the you know to the size of the device that the typeface is being featured on, so they need to choose a different typeface. Mm. Um, the other kind of thing that I think is important in this nature is um, getting out of your own comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, and I see this a lot of engineers as well. Um, being able to uh, leave your environment and go out into the world, learn from the people that are using the, the product in the environment that they're using it in, mm. not just within the walls of your agency or your you know your team. So, are your designers actually doing that, like going up to people that are using oh, yes. Twitter and, and seeing like oh, yes. how they're interacting with the product and everything else? Yes, we, we have a lot of guerrilla style research where That's we're really on the street, interesting. either observing people uh, in uh, controlled environments or out in the real world as they're using it. Right. And if you were to talk, let's say, um, so I, I've seen somewhere that you, a part of your job is that every single week you critique design from over 60 product designers around the world, right? So that's... Uh, you've done your homework, but actually the, uh, the work that I do is to set up the critique environment. Right. So, I don't so you do facilitate. Yes. I'm, I'm more it. the facilitator and uh, inviting people to... Um, to uh, contribute to the conversation. Right. Yes. Right. And my, my point was you're exposed to a lot of work that yes. designers do. I see a lot. Yes, you see a lot. If you were to point out what would be three things that really good designers that you've seen them work do, what do you think those things are? Like the top designers that create great work, mm -hmm. what do you think are a couple of things that they do that makes them do that from your analysis and observation? Sure. Um, giving and receiving actionable feedback. Right. So you make the feedback less personal and more actionable. So right. for instance, um, a piece of feedback that is not actionable is I don't like it. A piece of feedback that is actionable is here's how this might be able to grow and serve the user needs mm. and it's it becomes less about ego and more about what the customer and user uh, needs or the, or being able to integrate the feedback into your work so that the business and the product moves forward. Right. Um, divorcing the piece of feedback from your own opinion and making it more about the user's needs and mm -hmm. fulfilling the user's needs or um, at Twitter we have a framework called jobs to be done. So what does the what does the user end up hiring Twitter for? That makes it more about the actual product and less about the person delivering the feedback. Right. So you're uh, go on. Sorry. I didn't oh, no, no, go ahead. So you're saying it's more a job of actually being like I, I've seen the ego topic come up like three times in in what you said. So okay. you're saying like being a good designer, it's really aligned with you actually being a person that has rather less ego or or few than others? If you want to create for yourself, then that's art. Uh, if you want to create for an end user, unless you are the end user, uh, then you still need to be able to socialize your work and um, think about the product in a bigger environment and slightly bigger context than your own needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I understand. Cool. Um, something that I've seen that was interesting is um, I was, I was actually talking to Debbie Millman, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know her, she's part oh, yes. of AAGA like yes. you, uh, she's amazing, yes. one of the first podcasts in the world. She was here, she was in Bucharest. I think, yeah, that's year. where I met her, yeah. last year or something? Yes. So one thing that she, I asked her what her motivation is when it comes to design, and this is actually my last question. Okay. Um, and she said that her motivation, I thought, I thought that was really interesting, that's why I'm saying this to you, it was for her to create, create things with her own hands and to, just to create and I'm like okay that's your motivation that's really interesting um, because a lot of people have different kind of things like oh I want money and I want this and that and recognition for my work and there's a bunch of other stuff what do you think motivates 
you and your work in doing what you do and keeping you motivated? It's a great question. Um, I don't consider myself a fine artist, so I'm not developing or creating uh, a lot of work for me, at least in the design realm. That that manifests for me in cooking. Mm -hmm. um, I love to cook, and recipes are, I love it too. are ways of experimenting and learning how to create a dish. Um, for example, I really like eggplant parmesan, and if I see it on the menu, I will order it to see how someone else has created it. Really Italian of you. Uh, it's also research. Uh, it's constant research. Um, um, I think for me, the the thing that motivates me every morning is making the world a better place, mm -hmm. understanding how people understand each other, uh, whether you're from Bucharest or New York City, um, and that common spark of humanity that uh, ignites us to to create or co-create is is always exciting. Um, I also love to make connections. I love to connect dots, and even connecting dots across things that. Um, might not have been um, understood or expected. Um, and that, that actually shows up in cooking as well. I made a, a cucumber tarragon sorbet, and I wouldn't have put a cucumber and tarragon together unless I was just like experimenting and thinking, hmm, this would taste good with each other. Um, and the more I create that same recipe, the more I learn less tarragon, more cucumber, less sugar, more water. That's, Interesting. Uh, that's that's exciting for me. Um, and would you say that creativity for you, because a lot of people think of creativity as creating things out of nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also seen definitions of creativity as being a really good lateral thinker mm -hmm. and being able to intersect circles between them. So what you're saying is when you're connecting dots between things, you're actually having the cooking type of, let's say that the cooking is a circle and then you have another circle and what intersects between it's the cooking cucumber mm -hmm. thing I cannot even pronounce. <laughs> uh, so would you see it, you look at creativity that way? Yes, I think unexpected pairings are very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of another example right now. Um, but I, I also think that after being on this planet for so many decades, um, the notion that uh, many things are not new and it kind of forces the designer to recontextualize and take something from, you know, surprising places out of left field, it's called, to then bring it into a different context. That's also very exciting to me. Um, when I was younger, I thought, oh, this means that, this means that, like, nothing is new. And I was disappointed by that. Mm. But now I think it's more exciting to, to try and be, to, with a different kind of context, to try and be more innovative and think about the cross-pollination of ideas rather than new ideas. Right. Maybe the cross-pollination is what makes it new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just to give a final example of that because it just crossed my mind yeah. and then we'll end the interview. Perfect. But I have, I have a really good friend who's a programmer mm -hmm. and he really loves dolphins. And he was always intrigued by like, I'm, I'm doing this programming thing, but I really love dolphins. Yeah. And it's kind of weird, like dolphins, and, like, come on, like you never see that. But now what he does is that he creates uh, tracking devices for dolphins. So he creates software for dolphins, he intersected those two things, loving love for dolphins and programming, creating something that he's really good at and that not a lot of people are good at. That's so I think fantastic. what you're saying, it's, it's really interesting as a method of thinking in anything, in creativity, in anything else. So. Yeah, I think that's. I think the more that we have um, visibility into what everyone else is doing, given the rise of social media and other kinds of ways of following hashtags and following people that you just met via LinkedIn or other kinds of uh, platforms, um, the more that we'll discover those kinds of crossovers. I think there's a lot of uh, integration happening now um, across design, not just within design. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Josh, for taking time yeah. for an interview. Thank you so much, everybody that's watching. Go and follow Josh uh, and, and his work. I've kind of researched my way into learning about him. There's a ton of interesting stuff Josh is doing, not only Twitter, you're doing a bunch of other stuff, but really interesting work. Appreciate what you do. Appreciate your time and thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck on your speech today. It's going to be awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, guys.